The fires, which were dotted around that cave, created an eerie glow. People's faces flickered into sight and then vanished back into the darkness. A drip supplied an irregular beat which reverberated off the uneven walls. Tamsin counted the escapees once again. Three hundred and seventy-three. Three hundred and seventy-four. Tamsin's belly rumbled. I'm starving, Papa, she complained. It's freezing up here. Don't we have any food or blankets? I didn't think the snake game would take this long. No one thought it'd take this long, Papa Tamsin replied. The holies played us really well. They caught us completely off guard. No one had the time to grab any food or blankets. But I'm hungry, Papa. I'm really cold. Our ancestors got cold and hungry when they ran away from the nasty king. We have to suffer like they did, up here in the hills. But don't you worry, we always win in the end. It's written in the rules. We just need to gather a thousand villagers. Then we'll have a great feast and warm up by a roaring fire. Just you wait and see. Tamsin nodded. She kissed her father, curled up into a ball, and fell asleep at his feet. She was snoring like a warthog when the singer arrived, out of breath and smelling of stale poo. I was in the village toilet when the holies came, he explained. The holies stood outside so I couldn't leave. But I could see them through the gaps in the wooden door. I could see a holy walking towards me. The singer shook his head. There was a look of shame on his face and a look of horror in his eyes. The rest of the escapees inched closer. A beetle sat down by the singer's foot. What could I do? he begged. What choice did I have? I unlatched the door and jumped into the cesspit. The sewage reached my waist. It came up my trouser legs and filled my pants. The holy squatted down above me. He, his diarrhoea was like a shower. It washed right over my hair. The escapees bowed their heads. The midwife tutted. Mama Tamsin patted the singer's back. That's terrible, she said. That's nothing. Not compared to what they did to Dumba. The sound of a howling wolf echoed across the valley. The escapees all held their breath. The singer looked down at his groin. When he lifted his head, he saw hundreds of eager eyes staring back at him. The cavern was silent. It was completely still. The fires no longer flickered, and the water no longer dripped. The singer shook his head. What happened? his wife finally asked. The singer slouched. I don't know, he replied. I heard the gunfire. It sounded like chickpeas popping in a pan, rapid and high-pitched. I heard the screams, and then I heard the silence. It was deafening. The singer looked up at the villagers and down at the floor. A bat flapped its leathery wings. A star twinkled in the sky. I stayed in that cesspit for hours, the singer continued. I only left when I was sure the holies had gone. The first thing that hit me was the smell. <laughs> it made the cesspit seem like a princess's boudoir. That smell was so strong, I could taste it. It was nauseating. It brought bile to my mouth and tears to my eyes. That smell of boiling human blood and scorched human flesh. That smell of fire and brimstone which still lingers in my nostrils. That smell of kerosene which made me vomit. Which made me choke up little pieces of my stomach and fall to the ground in pain. The singer wiped a tear from his eye. I walked through Dumba streets, between burning barns and burning homes, dead yaks and dead dogs. And then I saw it. That giant pyre, that glowing pyramid of human flesh and bones, with legs sticking out here and arms sticking out there, with the dust of burnt human hair dancing on the flames, and with skinny villagers' head with its hollow eyes and its twisted mouth. The singer stared at the opposite wall. The Dumba is dead, he sighed. Our houses have been ransacked, our supplies have been stolen, and our animals have all been killed. The embers of our dreams have been blown away by the wind. A feather skipped across the floor. A teardrop landed in the dust. A spider buried its head.